Hello, this is Keith Felger. I'm an Iowa State University student in the summer 2013 term, and this video is an assignment post for Noreen Kelly's HCI 587X class. The goal of this presentation is to try to understand how UX and UI transformations can be described in the context of activity theory and its application to HCI. I will also attempt to do this visually as my personal learning style benefits most from this method and will hopefully help others. Also, we should all have a basic understanding of activity theory's history and tenets from assignment five, so I will only review some of the pertinent characteristics along the way. In my quest for supporting material, I thought, what the heck, it's worth a try to search for such a publication, but no such luck. Um, I had to make my own. I must say, though, it looks pretty legitimate. As with any research project, a student can expect to get help from the internet. A search of Google Images for activity theory or activity theory systems diagrams results in a staggering collection of activity systems diagrams and templates. And unfortunately, sifting through them can cause even more confusion with an already difficult subject especially when you try to apply these theories and work of others towards your particular use case. One representation that does provide insight came from the University of Tasmania. As you can clearly see in their depiction, the activity performed by the subject actors has an effect on the object and a subsequent effect on the outcome. To me, the affordance of a vector is present here which is a suitable metaphor in that activity has both motion and direction. Another valuable activity system representation came from a template I found at phdblog.net. I think by being able to answer general questions in layman's terms in order to build your own model is an excellent idea. As we can see here, the subject can be defined by who is involved in carrying out this activity, the outcome, what is the desired outcome from this activity. By simply answering these questions, um, you can build the basis for your activity systems diagrams. Also, um, the use of color is very helpful as it can draw attention to relationships or nodes that um, are So for a quick review of some of the key aspects of activity theory as it applies to HCI, um, I'll go over now before we get to my activity systems diagram. Uh, the first, the quote from Victor Kapitalinen is quite direct. It is uh, calling out the limitations of other theories. He basically states, activity theory was introduced to the field of HCI to address the limitations of other theories which did not address the role of society and culture and did not highlight the roles of objectives. Um, the other theories he's talking about here are distributed cognition and phenomenology. Uh, the next point here, uh, according to Engstrom, activity theory is based on culturally mediated learning. I think we know that. Um, activity theory treats people and tools asymmetrically. So it's, uh, it's very uh, stark in defining that uh, people are not machines, and machines are not people. Um, and essentially, uh, mediation occurs through artifacts um, as a result of human thought and behavior. Uh, activity systems are constantly evolving and developing. Again, uh, I think that's something we know. And in an activity system, both the object and the subject are transformed by the activity over time. Again, that uh, speaks to the dynamicism of activity systems. So in my quest to um, hopefully come up with a uh, please, visually pleasing representation of an activity systems diagram that um, depicts the what I call the transformation of a UX um, in such a way that uh, it's easy to grasp. I um, 
essentially took the the basic um, template Engstrom's uh, activity systems diagram and added uh, what I would call dynamic relationship vectors. So these arrows flying about um, have meaning that uh, I wanted to convey uh, based on the importance of what they represent. Um, on a side note, we do see uh, relationships between every node, uh, every actor in a activity system. Um, however, uh, as I mentioned, I only want to call out attention to those that are important to the point where um, should a breakdown occur um, in these contradictions and tensions, then the uh, desired outcome will not occur. So in representation of this uh, activity system, we have the object, which in this case is the current state of the user interface um, providing the current level of UX. Uh, the artifacts uh, are in a typical of a software development environment. Uh, of course, we have computers, uh, development applications and frameworks, um, multiple environments, test, development, QA, etc. Um, design tools, source control tools, and uh, others, of course. The subject is um, something I had a little bit of a struggle with. Um, normally, you would expect that to only be the people doing the work. However, the uh, end users of the UI, the ones that do gauge the UX, uh, are also intimately involved in the transformation activity um, so they are also represented as subjects. The rules, um, corporate development BKMs, so best known methods of development practices for applications within the corporation. So it'll include security, authentication, um, such things as the development languages, uh, database backends, uh, security and locale settings. The communities, um, in this instance, it'll it'll be uh, other people that uh, have similar experiences, use similar applications, both in the company and in the outside world. Uh, project managers, usability engineers, uh, other kinds of designers, <coughs> software vendors could be involved and um, the internet, internet community at large. The division of labor uh, includes um, those in the corporation that are not directly doing the development, but are integral to the business, um, such as the IT infrastructure folks, um, any kind of support personnel, uh, also those that facilitate, uh, say the uh, purchase of the application. So we could include uh, people up the chain in finance and management. The, um, the whole basis for this activity was to improve the UX. Uh, the driver for that is illustrated here as this uh, vector of what I call upgrade tension. It's a continual, um, insatiable <laughs> requirement from the users. Uh, it's placed on the object and results in um, the subject, and subjects in this case, performing the work, the activity, which I'm calling UX transformation. Um, also note that uh, this is a function of time. The uh, care and feeding vector is another critical uh, requirement. As <coughs> mentioned, the uh, object does take um, uh, monetary support, uh, infrastructure support, 
it also takes uh, training, which uh, could be a, a uh, outcome from the community or from the Division of Labor. Uh, so notice that this vector does cross both of these nodes. Also, the uh, another function of labor that's critical is staffing. So in order for there to be end users or developers, the UX transformer in this case, um, staffing requirements need to be met. Another key point here um, that I want to mention is that during the transformation activity, feedback between the actors, in this case the uh, end users and the transformer, is an ongoing practice um, towards a continuous improvement. It would have been nice to have a spiral, I suppose, to represent feedback um, towards the delivery of the upgraded object. Um, in summary, when all these come together in um, the way that they are planned, uh, the output will be a new and improved UI. Um, and as uh, the insatiable appetite of the end users predicts, uh, repetition will be this driving vector, this contradiction that will start this whole process o all over again. Um, so again, I'm Keith Felger from Iowa State, uh, classes 587X um, under the guidance of Noreen Kelly. Thanks again for listening.